Hi boys, welcome back to the channel YouTube. I'm Navy Dad, this is Rusted Bolts Garage, and we're back to work on Old Blue. <laughs> So this will kick off a three-part series on door rebuild. Okay, now I wasn't actually going to do a video on doing the pins, but I've seen some videos out there that aren't exactly correct, so I'm doing it. I might as well video it, right? Okay, so this this particular video is going to be how to properly install your door pins and bushings, and of course remove the door uh, and put it back together. <laughs> All right, and then part two, which will air next week will be the dreaded door roller pins and how to properly install them. You do not remove material from the pin. That is not right. And also, if you have an 88 to 94 work truck or Cheyenne that did not come with any power accessories, you have to drill out the hole in the cowl between the hinges to run accessories. Like I'm going to be upgrading later uh, power windows and of course power mirrors and power folding mirrors and all that stuff. So I got to drill that out. So the proper, I screwed it up too. <laughs> so the, the, I'll have all the proper measurements so you don't have to screw it up. And that will be in, um, in part two. Then part three will be the fun part. That's right, installing the Topkick Kodiak 3500 HD door handles. That's the kind you just pull and grab. Uh -huh. now, that will be in part three, which will air the following week. Like, anyway, let's get started on the pins and the bushings. Okay, so here's all of our parts. As I said earlier, go to the description, click on the Google Docs link, and you can download links to all of this stuff. Except for, of course, the, um, the Top Kip Kodiak door handles. That's something you're going to have to source yourself. We have new latches. We have door pins, miscellaneous hardware, new keys and locks. And these are the striker bolts. We've got the um, roller pins. Uh, new uh, springs. Uh, I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it all, right? And the other thing is, get the freaking tools. These are cheap. This thing is like $10. I think you can actually get this spring removal tool at Harbor Freight. I saw that later, but I just ordered it on Amazon. And then this is the uh, door pin removal tool. So uh, just go ahead and buy it. I think this is $22. I think this is $10. It's cheap and it's gonna make your life a hell of a lot easier than trying to use a chisel and a hammer and all that crap. So, let's now take a look at the doors themselves. So, I suspect if you have your original door handles in, yours look like this. Yeah, broken. And this door is hard to open. The uh, striker bolt is worn out. The roller pin is worn out. Isn't that, isn't that nice? In fact, the passenger side is worse than this side. Uh, and the pins are worn out. So the whole door is loose. So it just all needs to be replaced. And of course, uh, the original latches are worn out too. This door has a hard time shutting too sometimes. It just uh, does that. Even if you hit it hard, sometimes you have to butt slam it. So passenger side door is actually worse which is weird because if I hit a big bump the whole door kind of bounces because the latch is so worn out and the pins are worn out which is weird it's passenger side now as you can see somebody tried to steal this truck actually they did steal the truck um, this window has been busted out that steering column is not the factory original steering column so uh, yeah it got stolen at some point in fact both windows have been replaced so this door, listen to this. Uh, yeah, does yours, does yours sound like that? Yeah, that whole pin is just locked up solid. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Okay, one thing, I'm, I'm not gonna do a whole in-depth thing on uh, removing the door panel. I'm just gonna do a quickie thing with, you know, nice music because there's hundreds of videos on removing a door panel in an OBS truck. But I will say, use the right tools. All these sort of things are really, really cheap. You can get them on eBay, you can get them on Amazon. Use the right tools so you don't damage your, your doors. In fact, I've already actually taken this off a while back to fix something in it, and all the pins are broken. <laughs> so I've got to replace those two because somebody used the wrong tools. So use the right tools.
okay so it's been about six weeks since I did this side you know life gets in the way and you know what can you do so all of that is nice and listen to that you can't hear anything it's nice and quiet and watch isn't that nice so also since I'm replacing the latch and of course the door handle with the top kick door handles and I'm taking the door off and replacing the pins and all that fun stuff um, I suggest that you go ahead and gut the door it, just personally I mean you can take the door on and off by yourself if you do it that way if you leave everything on it can get it's a little heavy but definitely if you're gonna replace the door handles and the latches you gotta you gotta have this panel off it just makes it so much easier I mean you can kinda do it but uh, I really I really recommend that you take this off it's not that big a deal okay so to remove this panel you have got 10 six millimeter nuts that go all the way around and one 10 millimeter right there uh, and so we'll get to it Give you enough room to get to the stupid clips and then all right let's see okay so i'm doing my best here to hold but you see that's one right there okay that's for the um that's for the handle that's for the handle and then that's for the door lock and it's hard to see in here but there's a little tiny latch that you've got to pop out and then push the clip down and you want to try and save these because they, like I said these are hard to find so I use this little guy right here and that gets under the latch and I'll show you here in a second what it looks like the later trucks got away from these stupid metal clips but <clears throat> let's see yeah that's a big ass squirrel Jesus anyway I, th I think these the, the later model trucks got away from from these clips um, so what they do I'll show you what it looks like there in a second but uh, this is the latch right here so you've got to pull that up you got to bend it a little bit which is okay and then you push this back and then the bar pops out of it and, um, and then you're just gonna have to bend it back and drop it back in when you put it back together it's it's fine it won't hurt it That's, that's how you do that. <laughs> you have to have it all the way down, you slide this forward, and then pop out that one off the bottom of the, of the window um, track, and then slide this back, and there you go. You got it right off. You don't have to bend it, like when you're at the junkyard, and you don't care. <laughs> okay, so now let's take the window out. Don't forget to, to loosen, or take that bolt out too. That's the front track. Yeah, I tilt it forward like this. Pull it straight up at an angle through the outside of the door. And there you go. Got your window out. <laughs> okay, next up is uh, going to be a little difficult to film. The next thing is to get the freaking spring out of there. Okay, do not use a screwdriver and jam it in there and try and pop it out of there because you're going to hit yourself in the freaking face and knock your eye out. Use the correct tool. So the nut on here is a 13 millimeter. All right. There it is. Don't aim it anywhere near your face or anything like that because that thing could slip and gently release it. All right, and there's your old spring. Now, the fun begins. Okay, very important. The pins go in, the bottom one goes down. Okay, it in installs downward and removes upward. The upper pin installs from the bottom upward and it removes from the top downward which is not the way you would expect it but just keep in mind that 
the tops of each pins point to the center of the door. Uh, the bushings, they're two different size bushings. Make sure that you don't put the wrong size in because once you put these things in, you don't want to pull them out and reuse them. They're brass and they can crack and they're very easy to damage. So one set goes on the actual hinge on a body and then one set actually goes on the door port. So they don't go in the same place. You need to be very cognizant of that. We'll go over that as I do this. Okay, uh, as I said, it, it's much, much easier to remove these doors if you have a helper. But if you're gonna do it yourself, I highly recommend uh, stripping the door down like this. Then get a floor jack and put it about the center of the door like this and then start removing your pins. I recommend removing the bottom pin first because it's harder to get to uh, and then remove the top pin. Now, <clears throat> remove the top pin is pretty simple. Just put a hammer in there and smack it. Bottom one is kind of difficult because the way the door curves around right here see here's the pin and you've got this curve on your door right well that's why they actually make these tools <laughs> so you've probably seen these on Amazon or wherever um, and you can use a tool like this and come from underneath and hit it but that's just difficult so I'll show you what this tool is actually designed for, to do it it's still a little difficult to do but this does make removing that bottom pin a lot easier and then this thing you just kind of shove under the pin and can pry it out so it does make it a lot easier these tools are cheap um, so I'd highly recommend if you're gonna do this more than once <laughs> which I have <laughs> angle here but, but again this this whole thing is so that you don't <laughs> damage yourself in, uh, or your, you know, damage your body work. You don't, you don't want to do that. Even, even on this old truck, I wouldn't want to put a hammer mark in it. Uh, it didn't earn that like it earned everything else on it. All right, so get it into position, right? Can you see that pretty good? Yeah, pretty good. All right. Now we're gonna finish it off from this direction. go okay and this little guy here is to just kind of angle up and you can pop that and there you go pretty cool huh okay next up is the top pin and of course the easier one so you can do this the easy way if, if your pins totally worn out it's probably going to come out really really easily and you can just take a hammer in here like this and just lightly pound it and it should be fine now if you've got one that's rusted or one that's you know bent but and, it, and it's hard to knock out you can you can use this tool and you can use it two different ways one put it on top like this again it kind of goes around the curvature and, and then take your hammer and hit it right here you also come around and do it just like that and that will pop that sucker right out so this is pretty loose so I'm just going to use the typical little old hammer so we're just going to hit it what I'm going to do uh, is I'm just going to pull out the pin and I should be able to easily knock that one out too by hand the rest of the way and then I'll take the door off Okay, so next up is the bushing install. Now, this is really important because you can really screw this up and you don't wanna to have to take the damn door back off after you screw it up. So, remember that the bushings install on the hinge on the body, on the upper, and on the hinge on the door on the bottom. And there are two sizes to fit the pin, large and small, okay? Large goes on the bottom for the pin going up and then on one down, down below, it goes, well, we'll get to that, so you don't get confused. The bushings install this direction, 
and this direction. Now you would think with the pin going forward, you should actually install it this way. No, because this is a bushing. The outer part of the hinge of the door sits right here and right here and it rides on the bushing. Okay, now do not pound these in. You will break them. They're brass. They're thin. They're not, you know, they're, they're quite uh, easy to break. If you drop them, you can crack them. So they make a tool for it, but you can easily make your own tool. This is just a, uh, I, I'm not even, not even sure what size this is, but you can use like a, um, a 15 millimeter um, socket to do the same thing. So I'll show you how we do that. And I apologize, the wind is really starting to pick up, so I'm trying to get this done. Because we've got rain coming in and, well, there's no door. <laughs> seated in there. Now, off to the door side. By the way, I did put these in the freezer too. Every little bit helps, you know what I mean? Alright, so as a reminder, the bottom, the bushings go in on the door side. And the large bushing goes at the top and the small one at the bottom. So, and this one's kind of a booger to get in, even with this, so. Bang them in, press them in. Okay, so there you go. Bushings are in properly, not damaged, not cracked. Okay, here's the door before I put it back on. Something to keep in mind also, because this can get very confusing when you, uh, especially if you're trying to do this yourself. First of all, make sure this is not in that position. If you put those pins on with it, uh, with that spring latch hanging out like that, you're going to have to take the damn thing off again. And of course, these are one-time use pins and bushings. So if you do that, don't try and reuse them. You're just going to say you're just going to cause yourself a mess of trouble later. Make sure it's folded in like that. said about that. <laughs> Okay, next up this guy. Now keep in mind something to, um, when you put these pins in, they don't necessarily seat all the way down. So you can still see some of the um, uh, edge of that because there's a shoulder on the pin. All you need to have is it in far enough to where you can get the C-clamp on. Remember these are different than OEs. Okay, first up, watch this. Nice and firm. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that sweet? 
There's just something satisfying about that, isn't it? And I do have to fix this first. Yeah, or somebody broke into it. Both sides were like that, of course. Both windows have been broken out. Truck's been stolen. Typical. Oh yeah, and before you put your windows back in, clean the 20 or 30 years of gook off the windows. And yes, gook is a technical term, is in the automotive uh, dictionary under gook. Okay, so while you have your stuff off, of course, clean all the gook. We went over that already. <laughs> uh, but also, you want to go to your local Honda dealership, or you can actually get this on um, Amazon, of course, and you want to get some of this. Shinitsu, Shinitsu, Shin, Shinsu, I think it's Shinitsu. I'm not sure how to pronounce it exactly. I think it's Shinitsu. Bless you. Oh, thank you. Anyway, uh, so this stuff, it, it will not dry out. It's got the consistency of parquet margarine. Uh, it is great stuff. And that's what you want to do is put in your channels and then also into your, um, uh, in your reg regulator, clean clean all this stuff off, all the old stuff, and, and put this in here. And you'll never have to do it again. It's pretty good stuff. I'm actually not going to do that on this one because I don't want to waste them. Pretty low. And and uh, well, probably within the next two months, I'm going to be switching over to power windows anyway. Time to get this back together. Basically, you put it back together the same way you took it apart. <laughs> all right. I hope you all enjoyed that one. When hit the like, share subscribe button so if you can see part two which will air next week again that's going to be the dreaded roller bushings and drilling out the cow hole and then part three the following week will be the top kick door handle installation boys you be safe and it's uh it's morning so my coffee yeah no beer <laughs> y'all take care